everyone, my name is Nivedia and I am a student in the Connections Academy. This is my science textbook. It's called Science A Closer Look and it's by the Mecra Hill Companies. Let's learn the first lesson. It's about cells. We see a lot of things around us. Out of that, how do we identify things as living or non-living? Let's take some examples. Here are some random pictures. Can we classify these into living and non-living things? So here's the answer. It's pretty easy, right? Every living thing has millions of tiny things inside it that helps them grow. These are called cells. Cells not only help living things to grow, but perform many other tasks, such as they convert food to energy, cells help to get rid of waste, cells help to reproduce, and cells help to adjust to changes in the environment. Now let's look at animal cells and plant cells. Let's compare them. This is the cell membrane. It is the covering of the cell. It's like the skin of the cell. This is the cytoplasm. It is a jelly-like substance inside the cell. It is mostly water, but it also contains some chemicals. This is the nucleus. It is the brain of the cell. This controls all the cell activities. This is the mitochondria. And it is the powerhouse of the cell. The plant cell has one, and the animal cell has one. This, this is the vacuole. The plant cell has one or two vacuoles, but they are very big. The animal cell has a lot of vacuoles, but they are very small. This stores food, water, and waste. This is the chromosome. Chromosomes are thread-like structures that are located in inside the nucleus. It contains the genetic material, DNA. These control how the cell develops. This is the cell wall. It is a thick protective covering around the plant cell. Only the plant cell has it, and the animal cell doesn't. This is called the chloroplast. It helps the plant make food out of photosynthesis and helps the plant stay green. Only the plant cell has it and the animal cell does not. Now we learned about the comparison with plant cells and animal cells. Let's look at how, how are cells grouped. Cells make up tissues. In organisms with many cells, the ones that do the same job all group together. These cell groups form tissues. A tissue is a group of similar cells that work together to perform a job. Tissues make up organs. Tissues can also group together. When they do, they form an organ. Organs group together to form organ systems. Cells group together to make tissues, just like bricks group together to make walls. How can you see cells? To see most cells, you need to use a microscope. This is my microscope, but scientists use microscopes that are a lot more powerful than this microscope. The picture shows a microscope that scientists use. Now we learned about cells and how they group to form an organ system. This is an example of how cells group to form the digestive system in human beings. Let's do an experiment to see how the organ systems in plants help move water from the ground to their leaves. We're going to put a few drops of food coloring into the water. Put the celery stuck into the colored water and keep it for a few hours. Hi everyone, we've kept this overnight and we're going to look at our findings. You can see that the color has reached all the way up to the leaves and it looks like it's dry but it's actually just pink. And 
You can see the blue spots on the leaves. I observed that water moves to different parts of the plant. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel. I hope it was fun learning together. Bye! Thanks for watching!